Hello, I'm Butch Curry from Zombie Nirvana Games. Welcome to the 13th episode of Fantasy Cartography with Adobe Photoshop, the podcast where I share my favorite tips, tricks, and techniques to help you make cool maps for your role-playing games. I'd like to start off by thanking all of you for your patience while I took a couple of weeks off. I really love making these podcasts, but they do take a bit of time to put together, so I was glad to have the time off. Now let's get started. We're beginning a new chapter in the podcast now, and with that comes a new map. Almost as soon as I started the last map, I got requests for tips on how to create one in the style of this one. You'll find a copy of this map in the gallery section of ZombieNirvana.com, and I'll put up a direct link to it in the show notes for this episode. As far as technique goes, this is a very painterly style map. A lot of the final look is going to rely on your ability to paint in the details that you want, but there are a few tricks that we can use in Photoshop that'll help make this easier on you. Like the last map we looked at, I began this one with a textured paper background. After those episodes, I had some folks ask me why I didn't just scan or download some paper and use that for my background instead of generating it from scratch. I've got nothing against using scanned or downloaded elements, just the opposite, really. But I'd like to try and use this podcast as a vehicle not just for showing you how to make cool maps, but hopefully to teach you some things about Photoshop you might never have known. That's not something I could do just by using a downloaded background. Since I'm trying so hard to teach you something new, I'm going to try and kill two birds with one stone today. For our new map, instead of using the textured paper background that we created back in the first couple of episodes of the podcast, we're just going to use a flat uh, background for this one. I'm also going to save it as an action so that I can make another one just like it uh, at any time with just the touch of a button. Actions and tool presets are great time savers that are built right into Photoshop. We'll look at tool presets when it's time to start painting our forests onto this map, but for right now we'll just concentrate on actions. Just going to close this, come back up here. Now actions are simply just macros. They're a set of specific commands run by Photoshop when it's told to do so. You set up an action by recording it and activate it by playing it, both of which really couldn't be simpler. You just want to come over here to your actions palette, and when you start a new one, you're just going to click on the create new action button here. We're going to name this uh, paper background. And we're just going to leave it in our default action set for now. Uh, later on, when you start making a lot of maps on your own and you really start relying on actions, you might want to create a separate set uh, just for map making. And once you're ready, once you've got it named, just hit record. And it's going to start recording our action right away. So what we want to do to create this background, we're just going to come down here and make a new layer. We're going to come up here to filter, down to render, over to clouds. We're going to create a hue saturation layer. This is all stuff that we did just like in the uh, previous when we did the crumpled paper background. Switch it to colorize, change the hue, increase the lightness, and hit OK. Now this looks a little too cloudy, so we're going to come back down here to our clouds layer. We're going to hit it with a little Gaussian Blur by coming down to Blur and Gaussian Blur. Just maybe about five or six pixels. Just enough to soften it up a bit. And we're also going to come back in and give it a little noise, just to give it a little texture. So we're going to come down over here to Noise, Add Noise, and right around 10% should be plenty. That's, a, that's kind of a subtle look, but when you do this yourself, you'll be able to see the difference. Now that we've got our paper the way we want, we're going to come back over here to the Actions palette, and we're just going to hit the Stop button. Now we can, if we want, we can delete this, delete this layer. We can come back up here to this Paper Background Action and just hit Play. And there, just like that, we've created another paper background. You can run this whenever you want and have a background done in no time. At this point, you could use the same process we used in the crumpled paper tutorial to create a deckled edge around this map. This time, I think I'd rather have the background not draw too much attention to itself. 
So I'm going to leave it as is for now. That's going to do it for this week. Next week, we'll jump into this map with both feet as we generate our land masses in no time flat and use a cool technique to create a rather nifty looking coastline effect. Don't forget to visit ZombieNirvana.com for this week's show notes and for more information about my upcoming fantasy cartography book. Until next time, thanks for listening and happy mapping! Will you go? Lassie, will you go?